Hi guys, Mark Dawes here, and in this short video, I want to answer the question, which is, what is the difference between arresting someone and detaining someone, and, you know, is there a difference? And the short answer to that is, no, there is no difference whatsoever. In fact, if you detain someone for committing a crime, then you deprive that person of their liberty, and therefore an arrest has been made. Now, another question we get asked is, can I detain someone on suspicion of having committed a crime? And the answer to that is no. Now, this is a reference book I use quite a lot. It's uh, English Law. This is the second edition of this book, written by Gary Slapper and David Kelly. And in this book, it says, For there to be an arrest, the arrester must regard his action as an arrest. If he simply detains someone to question him without any thought of arrest, the action will be unlawful. Now, it goes on to say that there is also no police powers to detain someone against his will in order to make inquiries. This is confirmed by section 29 of PACE, which states that where someone attends a police station for the purpose of assisting with an investigation, he is entitled to leave at any time unless placed under arrest. Having said that, police officers do have some additional powers to detain on suspicion, but these powers are specific and limited by the following laws, which are, Section 23 of the Misuse of Drugs Act 1971, Section 1 of the Police and Criminal Evidence Act 1984, and Section 44 of the Terrorism Act 2000. Now, for example, under Section 23 of the Misuse of Drugs Act 1971, it states that a police officer who has reasonable grounds for believing that a person may have illegal drugs on them may search that person and, if necessary, detain them for the purpose. Now, you can search the other two acts as well in your own time, but that gives you an example uh, of where this power to detain someone can be used. Now, these powers specifically give a police officer conducting a search the power to detain the person's search for the purpose of the search. And these powers are specific to police officers only. Anyone else who detains someone against their will technically making an arrest on suspicion and possibly without evidence is committing false imprisonment and also breaching an individual's protected rights under Article 5 of the Human Rights Act 1998. In short, the term detain, with regards to non-police officers, in my experience, is a cop-out term, excuse the pun there, and it's used because they either a. don't have the evidence to make an arrest or b don't know that by depriving someone of their liberty that they are actually making an arrest and this is known as a compulsion or an arrest under duress. But if they've made the arrest legally then the person is lawfully detained. In other words they're arrested. In addition and this is an int interesting question that was asked. Someone asked the question so what about the bit in Section 3.1 of the Criminal Law Act 1967 where it says you can use reasonable force and it mentions suspected offenders? Is that not detaining or arresting people on suspicion of committing an offence for the purpose of bringing them before a competent authority, i.e. the police? And once again, it's the wording here within the Act of Parliament that's important because remember, an Act of Parliament goes through a whole interpretation process where words have to be interpreted in line with the law. And the first thing to bear in mind here is that a person can only be labelled an offender when convicted of a crime. Before such time, they are merely suspected offenders. Therefore, with regards to Article 3, 3, of, uh, Section 3.1 of the Criminal Law Act 1967, a suspected offender is, generally speaking, someone who has already been arrested, be this formally by warrant or by having been deprived of their liberty. Now, the statutory power of any member of the public in England and Wales to arrest someone they consider to be involved in criminal activity is to be found in Section 24A of the Police and Criminal Evidence Act 1974, commonly known as PACE. And in there, it states that a person, other than a constable, may arrest without a warrant anyone who is in the act of committing an indictable offence or whom the person has reasonable grounds to suspect is committing an indictable offence.
Now, an indictable offence is one that can be tried in a Crown Court in, in front of a jury for offences such as theft, criminal damage and assault, occasional action of body harm, just to give you some examples, uh, not an exhaustive list, of what an indictable offence is. And the problem is, is that most lay members of the public would not know what an indictable offence is and therefore may end up trying to make a citizen's arrest for other offences that don't fall within this category. So there's one hurdle there that people actually you know, trip over quite a lot. And as we all know, this is normally referred to as a citizen's arrest. The only other power available to non-police officers to arrest at common law is where a breach of the peace has been committed and there are reasonable grounds for believing that it will be continued or renewed. Now, those words reasonable grounds, we can do a whole video on that on, on its own. But reasonable grounds is not just suspicion. It's got to be an objective assessment. And when I used to do a lot of stuff in, in theft and violence for large retailers, stopping someone for theft, having the reasonable grounds to do so, meant that we'd seen them conceal the item. And therefore, if we stopped them, we'd have a good chance of actually getting that item back. It is also worth noting that the power to arrest for breach of the peace is not present if the act of a breach of the peace has already been completed. So, in other words, if someone's committed a breach of the peace, and for those of you that don't know, can't remember, a breach of the peace is defined in many ways, but here's one from case law. It says the peace is the normal state of society and a breach occurs when harm is done to a person or in their presence to their property or a person is in fear of such harm. So if that's happening, okay, we can only arrest under common law if the breach of the peace is present. If the person stops doing it, then we can't arrest for that. However, the suspect may still be arrested for having committed a different type of offence, such as criminal damage, etc. So let's just summarise these main points. One, the starting point is that detention of another person is on its own unlawful. And this is to give the law a balance and not to actually encourage you know, a vigilante approach to actually using uh, powers under law to arrest or detain or use force. Only the police have the power to detain someone within specific legislation and with limited powers, as you've already seen. And all other citizens have no power to detain anyone. Because detaining someone by removing their liberty is an arrest. So just get this right. If we are detaining someone, we are arresting them. Detain and arrest are the same thing. Under statutory law, a citizen who is not a police officer can lawfully arrest someone who is in the act of committing an indictable offence or who they suspect is committing an indictable offence. And at common law, a citizen who is not a police officer only has the power to arrest someone for a breach of the peace. So a citizen who is not a police officer can, under statutory law, arrest someone who is committing or they suspect is committing an indictable offence. But at common law, they can only arrest someone who is actually committing a breach of the peace. And remember, if the breach of the peace has finished, has ended, then the citizen has no additional powers to arrest. In both circumstances, arresting for an indictable offence or under common law for breach of the peace, a law-abiding citizen who is not a police officer can also use reasonable force to do so. However, if there are no reasonable grounds for arresting someone, or depriving them of their liberty, for example, we've detained someone but believe we're not making an arrest, then the arrest will be unlawful. And if the arrest is unlawful, then any subsequent use of force will also be unlawful because there's no grounds for that. In essence, detaining someone by removing their liberty without lawful authority is false imprisonment and a breach of an individual's protected rights under Article 5 of the Human Rights Act 1998, even if the person detaining the other person is not aware that they'd made an arrest. Thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, please get in touch or leave a comment below the video. But please, you know, do your own due diligence on this. Go and check to make sure that everything I've said is correct. Don't take my word for it. Go and find this stuff out. But I've been doing this type of work now for 29 years, so this is something I've taught. This is something I've covered in depth. So hopefully I'm on point with this stuff. But please, please do your own due diligence and check it out for yourself just to make sure that you're sure. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Any questions, leave me a comment, drop me an email.